Cleaning your home is always a chore, but an even bigger chore is sorting out the chemical warnings on the back of most common cleaning supplies. Sometimes, using these products can come with an allergic reaction, or possibly worse. Green cleaning is a simple solution to solve that issue. Using items you likely already have in your pantry, you can effectively clean without harmful chemicals. In this video class, recycling specialist Janet Moreland will give an overview of green cleaning, including a checklist of items to keep in your home arsenal, and then we'll see the step-by-step -step tutorial for creating two green cleaning recipes, a multi-purpose cleaner and an effervescent scrubbing toilet bomb. At the end of each recipe, we'll show the application process and some tips and tricks for using the concoction. If you'd like to skip ahead to one of the sections mentioned above, all you have to do is scroll down into the description box of this video and click on the timestamps. Without further ado, take it away, Janet. Hello, I'm Janet Moreland, Recycling Specialist with Riverside County Department of Waste Resources. We're here today to talk about green cleaning. Uh, green cleaning is just a simple uh, method of uh, using ingredients that you commonly find in your own pantry at home to make cleaning products, kind of like the things that grandma used to do. But um, just to simplify things and, and make our, our home environment maybe a little less toxic with over-the-counter um, cleaning products. So when we think of cleaning products, we, we think of all different kinds of um, cleaners. We've got cleaners for the bathroom, cleaners for the kitchen, laundry cleaners, um, anything that you can, you can think of that you need to clean in your home, there's a separate product for it. And so when you go down the cleaning aisle at the grocery store, the big box store, big box store you're just going to be overwhelmed with all different kinds of cleaners. So, but this is a way, um, with green cleaning, we're going to be making a variety of different cleaning products using simple ingredients that we have at home that a lot of us probably already have. If you have cleaners that you no longer like, don't like their, their, how they work, um, that you've purchased over the counter that are in a container um, with uh, you know, a, an over the counter already made product, if you have, find that you have cl uh, cleaners that you don't want to keep anymore, you would want to take those to a household hazardous waste collection program. We don't want to see all those cleaners getting mixed on the truck during collection. If you just happen to put a half a bottle of uh, liquid cleaner into your, your waste can and your neighbor puts another one in, those could be competing chemicals and it can cause a problem in the truck as they're collecting it. But also um, take the opportunity to contact your neighbors and see if maybe they would use your, the cleaner that you no longer want. But if you still have residual in the cleaner, a considerable amount to where it's not pourable, you need to bring it into the household hazardous waste collection for free disposal. And uh, the county, our department, will actually take care and make sure that the, that product is disposed of properly or made available at our drop and shop stores. One of the things we need to do when we're looking and purchasing chemicals or even using the chemicals that we have at home, you need to start reading the label. Now the writing on the label is very small, but there's very important information on here. So it gives you precautionary statements and lets you know that something may be poisonous or corrosive or dangerous. Um, you wanna look for words like caution, warning, danger, and poison. But it also lets you know what the physical and chemical hazards are. So uh, I came across one label um, that had a, um, a, a product and it said that uh, on the physical and chemical hazards, it says do not use this product with ammonia or acids and vinegar. So you didn't want to while you, you have a product that you use often, refresh yourself, read the label, and see what, what you should and should not do with it and how to properly use it. Um, I had been using one of these products for years and years and years. I never read the label, and I'm sure there's a couple of you out there that may be doing the same thing and not reading those labels. So why would we want to use green cleaning, um, green cleaning products at home? One, they're safer. Um, I think about uh, 
uh, mopping the floor with a, a common uh, over-the-counter product and it kind of might leave a little slight residual on the floor. Well, if a baby or a grandbaby comes walking in there and they're crawling and they pick up their stop and they put their hands in their mouth, they're going to be picking up some of that residual uh, chemical that may have been left on the, on the floor and putting that in their mouth. Another thing, if you have pets that have um, sensitive skin or you know, their sensitivities, they're walking on the floor picking up some of that residual and the only way they have to clean themselves is licking it. So they're going to ingest some of that chemical as well as they may be, have skin irritants to it. So it's, it's just kind of safer for the family. Uh, it'll reduce household hazardous waste. Um, we always are looking for ways to find better ways of doing things without increasing toxic chemicals in our lives. So when you stop purchasing those over-the-counter products that you may or may not like, you may not like the scent of it, you may not like it's how it produces, um, and you start doing simpler things that you know, I have control over how I make my products and what it's going to smell like and I, I kind of get a kick out of that. But um, when you stop buying all the, the over-counter products, then you can reduce some of the household hazardous waste that's being generated. And you can save money. Um, most of these products I've already got in my home or, you know, I use the, a lot of them I find in my kitchen pantry, things that I use to cook with. And so I, they get a double duty and I get to save some money. Um, I can buy in bulk then and buy larger quantities because I know I'm going to always use these products. So we have a basic, um, uh, it's, starter kit and it's uh, some very simple products right here borax which you can find in your grocery store easy it's a great cleaner for laundry as well as um, around the house distilled water um, distilled white vinegar and we're using distilled white vinegar as opposed to apple cider vinegar because apple cider vinegar has a slight um, color to it and there's a little bit more organic material in it since this is distilled, it's pretty pure, and as we use it in a, a cleaning recipe, it's going to last longer in a bottle under the sink and won't um, start breaking down. Baking soda and um, isopropyl alcohol. So these are all really good. The isopropyl alcohol will help you with disinfecting, which now that we're we live through uh, virus situations. Sometimes we want to step up our cleaning a little bit and using something a little bit more um, antiseptic to kill some of the germs uh, that friends and family may bring over. Then we also have our expanded kit and this is, uh, if, you, if you want to um, do additional cleaners like laundry cleaners or fabric cleaners, um, carpet cleaners and things like that. You may want to expand your, your repertoire a little bit. Uh, this is washing soda. It's different than baking soda. Um, slightly different. There's more, I think, a little more oxygen in this and it's uh, just a different product. So and we're in our recipe book that you can find online will specifically say where you when you need washing soda and when you just need baking soda citric acid we got hydrogen peroxide another um, antiseptic which is good to clean and sanitize hard surfaces um, castile soap we've got essential oils the, we, our favorites are eucalyptus lavender and tea tree um, we've got Fels Naphtha, and this is a laundry detergent soap. It's great for getting stains out, but we also use it in our laundry um, recipe. And the difference with the laundry detergent soap, it doesn't have all the moisturizers that a body bar or a, soap, a bar of soap that you would normally use in the, in the bathroom, a beauty bar, I guess I should say. And, and then this is like a, just a little treasure that I, I like. Uh, it's called Pummy. And this one is a, it's a pumice stone that you can use to clean porcelain. Uh, in my town, we have hard water and we get hard water stains built up on the porcelain. And this is a great way, without using any chemicals, to get in there and scrub it and remove that hard water deposit.
Along with these types of products here, this is our basic kit. There's other products that you might have at home that you could use. Um, things like salt as an abrasive, um, hydrogen peroxide, which is in our kit here. Toothpaste is a great abrasive to get um, stubborn stains off of things uh, and dig in there a little bit. Ketchup, um, lemons, lemon juice is another um, good kind of an acid to use. Uh, to like, uh, there's other things you can do. To find recipes on how to use all of these other different types of ingredients uh, that we don't have in our, our recipe book, you can go online, just go on the World Wide Web and do a DIY brass and um, brass cleaner or copper polish. And it'll give you a a number of different recipes that you could use. But we wanted to start off with the basics. We wanted to make this program easy so that anybody could probably go into their pantry right now and get started making a new recipe. The first recipe we're gonna start to do today is real simple. Um, this is an all-purpose cleaner. It's great to clean almost anything, uh, mostly hard surfaces like countertops, uh, uh, for mica and, and tile. Um, stainless steel surfaces. You can use this to clean out the inside of your refrigerator. Uh, you can use it for a lot of different things. I will caution you that for um, the natural stone surfaces like granite and marble, we do have a separate recipe in our recipe book for natural stone surfaces. But for the most part, um, this vinegar type product is going to be great. So in your, you're going to mix it and put it in a, a spray bottle. I've already marked this to be um, an all-purpose cleaner. What you'll find when you start switching to all-purpose cleaners, it doesn't have all the fancy blue dyes and red dyes and orange dyes in it. So we're going to, we're going to be a little bit of a purist here and uh, just do <laughs> do things but you do need to label it and I think it, if you mark it before you get started that's the easiest thing to do. So it's one cup of distilled white vinegar and again this is distilled so it's clean and pure. It doesn't have any um, biological ingredients that are going to break down like a apple cider vinegar or other type of vinegars that you might have. And we'll add that to our spray bottle. That's one cup of vinegar and one cup of distilled white, uh, distilled water. And the difference between using tap water and distilled water, again, is the organic, um, what we kind of say is a little impurities. Um, with distilled water, you get a pure water that's clean and it's not going to start building up algaes and things like that on long term. Um, so there's, you know, if you want to use tap water, use smaller quantities. So instead of doing one cup of vinegar and one cup of water, you could decrease that and use a half a cup of vinegar and a half a cup of water. But for our purposes, we wanted to use the distilled water because it is so much nicer and cleaner. And we'll put that in here. And basically we've got a nice cleaner and you can use this cleaner while you're in your your kitchen while you're fixing dinner you can still clean your counters I don't think you do that with some of those over-the-counter cleaners but it's nice this is stuff that you'd already put in your salad if you want to change it a little bit it's easy enough uh, remember those essential oils that we talked about before you can always pick up uh, some of the essential oils, um, give it just a little bit different scent. And I change mine with the holidays, like during Christmas I'll use peppermint, um, in the summer I'll use lemon. But um, you can always splash 15 or so drops of essential oils in here and that'll give you a nice fresh scent too. Just a little something different. Uh, essential oils are also great to help you breathe a little bit better. So you can go around, this disguises the vinegar smell a little bit and you can um, inhale the lovely, um, the lovely uh, scent of this, this distilled cleaner and the essential oils. As the name implies, this all-purpose spray has many applications. It's not only perfect for the kitchen countertop, but the cutting board as well. It's also fine for fabrics and spot cleaning. One note, you'll want to avoid using this spray on marble or other types of stone. High-end wood furniture isn't recommended for this spray either. 
Alternative recipes for those surfaces can be found at the link in the description box of this video. I have a garden at home. I like to grow herbs and a lot of times I will change the scent of my distilled vinegar. So it's simple to do. I saved a jar, a glass jar. You want to have a glass jar with a, a nice ceiling lid on it. And I labeled it before I started. So this one I meant did I used my rosemary. So I cut fresh rosemary from the garden, stuffed it in the jar, and then filled it to the top with my distilled white vinegar. And I'm going to leave this on the counter for two weeks to 30 days. And as it's doing that, the the um, the rosemary is going to let some of its essential oils out and scent this uh, vinegar. It's going to be slightly uh, changing color, but it's not enough to really damage anything in your house, and especially when you, you get it diluted with the water. But it does make a nice change to smelling vinegar all the time while you're cleaning. The nice thing I like about the vinegar, I have a son who has asthma and the um, scent is not so harsh for him and his breathing and the vinegar smell dissipates really quickly anyways. Vinegar tinctures aren't limited to herbs. You can use citrus peels just as easily. And with Riverside County being famous for citrus, odds are you might have a tree in your backyard. Put some peels in a glass jar, fill with vinegar, and give it a few weeks to soak up all that great citrus aroma. So the recipe we're gonna do now is a toilet balm. It's one of the favorites of everybody. It makes a great gift for other uh, occasions, you know, if, for Mother's Day, make mom's life a little bit easier by giving her a toilet balm. But anyway, it's made of simple ingredients. It's borax, baking soda, citric acid, our essential oils, and distilled water. And uh, I keep it in a spray bottle, and we'll, we'll talk about that uh, as we get along. So uh, when you look in your recipe book, you'll find the recipe for this simple little uh, cleaning product. Uh, the first thing is one cup of baking soda. That's this baking soda. And then we've got a quarter cup of citric acid. And the citric acid is a food preservative. You'll find it in the grocery store where you find the canning products like jars and lids to make your own pickles and things. And this is a food preservative, safe to work with, um, but it's our, our activator that makes the, the, uh, the bomb action. Uh, and then an eighth cup of borax, and that's our cleaner that goes in there. So you wanna mix this up. Work out any lumps or bumps that you might have. Uh, a lot of times just the uh, moisture in the air with all these dry ingredients can get them to clump together. And then we've got our essential oils. Today I'm going to use uh, tea tree and lavender. And we're gonna use, the, the recipe calls for 30 drops. So since I'm, I like to change up the recipe a little bit with my oils, I'll do 15 drops of tea tree and 15 drops of lavender. That's 15 and 15. And you'll notice that um, we, we're not adding the oil. I'm gonna give this a stir and mix in those essential oils. With this recipe, because it is an effervescent type of uh, toilet balm finished product, you wanna be careful about how you're adding in your moisture. So every time I've added something with the, the essential oils, I want to give it a quick stir. And when I'm adding in the water, this is the distilled water. I put it in a spray bottle and I've got it on a light spray. I'm going to mix that in as I go along. And we're looking at mixing this to the consistency of um, moist sand and just to the point where it starts to come together and hold and I can feel it starting to thicken up a little bit now. But occasionally I'll reach in and it's still not to the point yet. A couple more sprays. I wish you could had smell a vision so you could smell this. It smells wonderful. So it's now to the point where it's starting to just hold together. 
So it smell it has a, a, a moisture feel to it, but it's ready to mold. And uh, we like to do things with um, we like always like to reuse items. So we've got an egg tray, and it's got kind of a nice little star shaped uh, image on the bottom of it, and. Before I get started, I want to show you, uh, these are toilet bombs that we had made previously. They're hard, and they'll have that nice little shape on the bottom. So I want to pop a couple of those out, and then we'll get busy putting this in the, in the, the new mixture in. And so it's real important that when you're doing this, you um, put your ingredient in, and then press it down firmly so it makes picks up that image on the bottom. And you can continue to fill these up and you'll want to keep these in your house in the on a countertop somewhere overnight and they'll dry and they'll dry to this consistency. And with the, again this simple little mold, these pop out really easily and you can fancy them up and then put them together. They make a nice gift and they're great to have on your on your bathroom counter. The application for this recipe couldn't be easier. Just drop it in your toilet bowl or toilet tank and watch it go to work. You can wait a few moments or hours in flush or give it a scrub with a toilet brush. Either way, it's an easy way to keep your toilet clean. On top of our green cleaning recipes, we've also developed a similar set of recipes for the garden. Homemade products to deter weeds and pests without all the dangerous chemicals that come in so many commercial items. A PDF of the green gardening recipes is located on our website. Additionally, our green gardening class has also been made into a full video class similar to the one you're watching right now. All you have to do to check out that class is to click on the link in the upper right hand corner. Everything from homemade pest prevention sprays to chemical free weed killer is covered in the class. So if green cleaning is not your bag and you still want to buy over the counter products, you can buy safer products. Uh, and a way to find the, the safer products that aren't, don't have as many chemicals uh, that would damage the environment is to go to the EPA website. They have a program called Safer Choice and you'll find the link to the EPA website in our description box for this program. We'd also like you to join us if you would like for more free classes. We've got, the, along with the green cleaning, there's green gardening, there's uh, composting, vermicomposting, and many other recycling programs that it's a great way to take a little time, view it, and learn a little something to make your life and the life in Riverside County just a little bit better. better. So for additional resources, you'll find them in the description box. Um, you'll also find the link to the green cleaning recipe. Again, these are the simple recipes that we put together using the common ingredients at home. One of the resources we used is the um, Naturally Clean Home. And this is a book by Karen Siegel Mayer. And you'll find uh, the information her information in the green cleaning book where we reference the book. So I'd just like to thank you for joining us. Again, visit our website for more opportunities to reduce waste and different ways that you can make your home a little bit better and a little less wasteful. Thank you.